Welcome to this session at Medical Sciences by Naftali Muhumza. And in this session, we want to look at hematopoiesis. Last, in the last video, we had looked at introduction in hematopoiesis, where we saw what hematopoiesis is, that is development, it is growth, development, and differentiation of cells, that is blood cells. We saw how it develops in the fetus, in the fetal life, whereby we saw three stages, that is mesoblastic stage, hepatic stage, and myeloid stage. And we saw mesoblastic stage and hepatic being extramedullary hematopoiesis. Extramedullary hematopoiesis means that uh, the blood cell formation is occurring in the liver, in the spleen, in the lymph nodes. And there are many lymph nodes, whereby lymph nodes can be found in the thymus, they can be found in the intestine, in the GIT, and also in the mucosal lining of the respiratory tract. We saw that. Then we saw that the extramedullary means, that is why it means outside the bone marrow. And as medullary, it is occurring in the bone marrow. Majorly the red bone marrow. That's why we see it in children below 18 occurring in all bones, because all bones contain the red bone marrow. But above 18, it is, becomes committed into the ends of the long bone and flat bone, because the ends of the long bone and flat bone are the one containing red bone marrow. It occurs only in the red bone marrow. So we want to continue expounding on how this hematopoiesis, which is formation of blood, occurs in the human or in the animals. So we want to see that this hematopoiesis, it involves the hematopoietic stem cell. And this hematopoietic stem cell, you can call it prepotent. You can call it prepotent and call it prepotent. Why? Because it has, it can develop in any type of cell where you put it. It has, first of all, it has a bit of self renewal. And it has ability to develop in each cell where it is put. Ability to develop. To develop into any cell line. That is why we call it prepotent. So, and we saw that the first step of the blood formation, we see differentiation. We see differentiation. We see proliferation and maturation. These are the steps that are involved in blood formation. Whereby differentiation is always the first, whereby the hematopoietic stem cell or the prepotent stem cell, or you can call it hemocytoblast, undergoes, self, uh, undergoes differentiation. Differentiation is becoming more specialized. More specialized. Whereby it differentiates into two common progenitor cells. That is the common myeloid progenitor and the common lymphoid progenitor. These are the, it differentiates, meaning it is becoming more specialized by producing the common myeloid and the common lymphoid progenitor. And this progenitor common myeloid and common lymphoid, for them they are, we see that this hematopoietic stem cell is multipotent. This one is multipotent. Now this one has a bit of self renewal. Then this one is multipotent. Multipotent means it can produce more than one cell line. That is what we call multipotent. As we are seeing it in the highlight whereby when we have a prepotent stem cell, it, for it, it has ability to develop into an cell line and it has a bit of self renewal. 
But the common progenitor is multipotent, meaning it can produce more than one type of cell. Then from the common progenitor, we get the committed progenitor, or what you can call unipotent. Unipotent means now it can produce only one cell type. That is what we call unipotent. And the unipotent progenitor is the one that gives rise to the precursor. Precursor, these are the first to be recognized in the bone marrow. These ones are recognizable. They can be recognized in the bone marrow. That, those are the precursor cells. Then the precursor are the ones that gives rise to the maturing and the mature cells. And these ones, all of them, are undergoing through those, these three stages. That is differentiation, proliferation, whereby proliferation is multiplication. They are increasing in number. Increase in number. Then maturation, here the cells are, become, are acquiring all necessary requirements, whereby the DNA is supplying all requirements to form a mature cell. So these processes, we are saying that this common myeloid progenitor cell, which we can call corn forming unit game, is multipotent. It is producing different cells, or it is differentiating into different committed progenitor. But before we go to the committed progenitor, we have another multipotent that this common myeloid can give rise also to coron forming unit granulocytic monocytic, which is also multipotent because it's going to produce neutrophils and monocytes. After this multipotent stem cells, which has ability to produce many cells, they give rise into the committed. These ones are unipotent. We can call them unipotent. Or you can call them committed. Because they want to they can produce only one cell line. Whereby the, the common myeloid for the erythrocytic or for erythropoiesis. It first gives to burst forming unit erythroid. Why called burst forming unit? Because it was first discovered in the bursa of fabricas in birds. So we call it burst forming unit erythroid, which continues to form coron forming unit erythroid. And it's this common coron forming unit erythroid that gives rise to the precursor. And we say the precursor are the recognized stage. They are the first to be seen in the bone marrow. So, and the precursor for erythropoiesis is always the pronomoblast, which gives to basophilic normoblast, then the polychromatic normoblast, then it gives rise to orthochromatic reticulocytes and mature red cell. Then we see the colon forming unit basophil. For it, the, its precursor is the myeloblast, Together with even a coron forming unit eosinophil, whereby all and the coron forming unit granulocyte, all of them, their precursor is myeloblast. And all of them undergoes the same stage of granulopoiesis to give rise to, to the bends, that is the basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils. And we shall see different stages under this granulopoiesis, whereby the myeloblast can give rise to the to promyrocyte, then from promyrocyte, which is the largest. From promyrocyte, it gives it to the myrocyte. Then from myrocyte, it gives to metamyrocyte. And from metamyrocyte, it gives it to the stub or band cell, which gives rise to the segmented. So that is the stages we shall see under granulopoiesis. Then the colon forming unit monocyte gives rise to the monoblast, which is the precursor. So for the mono, for during monopoiesis, the precursor or the first recognized stage in the bone marrow is the monoblast, which gives rise to the promonocyte, then to the monocyte. And these ones, for them, as they mature, the cell increases in size.
then it is the only one whereby this and this, they, for them as they mature, the cells increase in size. Whereas the granular poesis and erythropoiesis, as the cell matures, the size keeps decreasing and the nucleus condenses. Then we shall see megakaryopoiesis or thrombopoiesis, whereby this conforming unit megakaryocyte, megakaryoblast gives rise to the megakaryoblast, which is the first recognizable stage during thrombopoiesis, and it gives, our, it gives us platelets, which we call thrombocytes, and which, what are the regulatory factors? We saw them in the last video, whereby this thrombopoiesis is triggered by thrombopoietin hormone. We saw thrombopoietin hormone doing the role of making the common myroid become committed to thrombopoiesis. We saw another hormone produced by the kidney driving the erythropoiesis, that is erythropoietin hormone. Whereby erythropoietin hormone is the one that makes the common myeloid become committed to produce erythrocytes. And for granulopoiesis, we shall see interleukin, whereby interleukin cytokines like interleukin 3 and interleukin 5 are the one that makes this common myeloid stem cell to become committed to granulopoiesis. It is thrombopoietin hormone driving this, thrombopoietin hormone driving this, and interleukins, that is interleukin 4, 3 and 5 for granulopoiesis. Then still we shall need coron forming unit, no, coron stimulating unit, coron stimulating factor GM, coron stimulating factor GM driving this step. And we shall see coron stimulating factor G also causing the multipotent coron forming unit GM to become committed to produce neutrophils. So these are the regulatory factors. The regulatory factors, then from there we shall see the common lymphoid progenitor. And in the common lymphoid progenitor, The common lymphoid progenitor, for it gives rise to pre B, gives rise to pre T, and pre natural killer cell. And this pre B is the one that gives rise to the B lymphocyte, and the B lymphocyte proliferates into the memory cells and plasma and plasma cells. These ones produce antibodies or immunoglobulins, which we shall see. And these ones, for them, it is that when you have suffered from the disease, the body always remembers how to fight it, to trigger what we call secondary immunity. Then the pre -T lymphocyte, for it, it gives rise to T lymphocytes, And these T lymphocytes, they are the one that give, differentiate further to give T helper cells the T, sub, T cytotoxic and the T suppressor or regulatory. Whereby these ones we normally call them CD, CD4. CD4 positive, these ones we call them CD8 positive cells. And these T helper cells are responsible for opsonization. They do what we call tagging of infected cells. Then these T cytotoxic for them, they come and kill the cell. Then these ones regulate their function. These ones regulate. Then finally we shall see the prenatural killer cells giving rise to natural, natural killer cells. And these natural killer cells are phagocytic cells. They play a big role in phagocytic.
cytosis. And these lymphocytes or this lymphopoiesis, for it, it is driven by major interleukin, interleukin 7. And then the B lymphocytes, we see interleukin 4 They're being regulated. So this is part two of introduction to hematopoiesis, whereby we have seen how different cell lines are produced. We have seen the hierarchy of the development, whereby we have the, cell, the stem cell, which has ability to, of self renewal and can develop to any type of cell. And we have seen the common progenitor, which are multipotent, meaning they can produce different cell types, then which gives rise to the committed and the committed are the ones that can produce only one cell type, which brings about the precursor, which are first to be recognized in the bone marrow. Then it gives the maturity and the mature cells. We have seen how they are regulated, whereby erythropoiesis is regulated by thrombopoietin hormone. That when there is hypoxia, it is erythropoietin. Whereby when there is lack of oxygen, that is hypoxia, it makes the common myoid become committed. Then for granulopoiesis, it is by interleukin 3 and 5, together with the colon stimulating factor GM and colon stimulating factor G. Then for megakaryopoiesis, is thrombopoietin hormone also produced by the kidneys. Then we have seen how the lymphoid, for it, it is regulated by interleukin 7, and interleukin 4. This is what we can talk about this. Thank you so much for listening until the end. Always make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed with me.